You guys are in for a treat today because we are at the Turtle Conservancy and we are about to walk into the enclosure of one of the world's most rare animals, certainly one of the most rare tortoises on Earth. I'm talking about the Unifera, the Anaganka, the Plowshare Tortoise. All three names, one species of tortoise from Madagascar. Unfortunately, there's only about 600 left in the world. And we have a colony of them here at the Turtle Conservancy. We're gonna find out what they're doing Keep this animal alive for many generations to come. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. This is exactly what the Conservancy hopes happens here. This is their large male. Uh, this animal actually came into the United States. It belongs to the San Diego Zoo. And it came into the United States in 1973. And it actually came into the United States one month before CITES, the Convention of International Trade of Endangered Species, was enacted. So this was in the 70s and it was kind of the Wild West. You could bring whatever you wanted into the country. So this animal came in, it belongs to San Diego Zoo as I mentioned. It is on loan to the Turtle Conservancy and they are trying to get this animal to breed. Now the animal has bred, we, they have gotten eggs here, but unfortunately none of the eggs have hatched. So interestingly, they have an expert from the San Diego Zoo who is coming up to actually do a test on the egg membranes from the female who we see here and you can see he's kind of doing his, he's interested in her, um, but hopefully he's not, you know, they're having problem with fertility. But like I said, they're trying to figure out whether or not his sperm is fertile. So they're doing a test on the egg membrane and to do that, they unfortunately have to sacrifice one or two eggs, but sometimes you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet, or in this case, you might have to break an egg to make a highly endangered tortoise. So as I stated, those eggs aren't actually going to term, they're, they're not hatching. So to do this, they have to see what's going on if he is actually fertile and fertilizing the egg. So that will be one very key ingredient to understanding whether or not this animal is even capable of reproducing. So like I said, just an incredible animal that's from a very small area in Madagascar. He's gonna come up and say hello. And I don't wanna to touch the animals here, um, I just want to maintain my distance because, you know, these are not my animals and there's a lot of biosecurity and especially with an animal like this, I'm, this is a chase. I'm being chased by a plowshare, which is pretty cool. But I always say, if you can't run away from a tortoise, you have bigger problems. They're from an area, a very dry area of Madagascar. They're actually from a small area. So all the species lives in a very tiny area and unfortunately because Madagascar might have a different government from, from month to month, uh, they don't have really strict laws. There's no one really enforcing the wildlife laws and sadly this animal right here uh, is just worth thousands of dollars on the black market. So you can imagine if you live in Madagascar, you have to feed your family, you come across one of these animals of varying sizes, uh, and it is true, you know, what Eric Good, who was the gentleman who's allowed me to come here and film today, he, he owns and operates this a magnificent facility he has been quoted as saying it's like finding a gold brick in the forest for your family uh, so you know you can imagine I mean it's tough it's really a tough thing and I've said this before when we talked about another Madagascar species uh, the radiated tortoise how can you blame people that are starving uh, when they come across an animal that could potentially feed their family for a year uh, and I don't mean feed them with the food of the animal, the meat of the animal, I'm talking about financially. So we need to do what we can to help people and in turn, the animals will benefit as well. So this animal, just an incredible, let's go look a little bit closer at it so I can show you what makes the Unifera or Plowshare or Plowshare, come on. So this, this handsome fella here, the first thing you're gonna notice is this Guler projection. Now both the males and females will have the guler projection. The males might be slightly more uh, pronounced, 
And so it is, you know, an incredible adaptation. It's just an ornamental thing, and it's similar to what sulcatas will use it for. Sulcatas have a double prong one. Well, the unifera or plowshare tortoise, it's also called the anaganka, will have just one. And they use it as kind of a uh, mating dance or a, a defensive thing against other males. Um, but this is just an incredible tortoise, and I love being so close to it. And he's being such a handsome guy. I mean, think about this. This animal came to this country in the 70s. Early, he came one year before I was born. I'm 42 years old in June. This guy is at least 42 years old. It came as an adult. So think about that. How old is this dude right here? And he's still kicking it. And he's still chasing the girls. Unfortunately, he may not be fertile any longer. So we have to figure that out. And that's what the, the conservancy is trying to do here. But just being able to be up close, see that incredible plow, uh, that, that nice guler projection, really amazing color for this animal, golden tortoise, incredible scales on the front here. He's got really cool elbow scale too. Come around here, I wanna show you this. Uh, it, I, it's not exactly his elbow, but if you look right here, he's got a really cool protruding scale. Uh, very, very awesome. You know, I love to see the details that nature has kind of engraved. She's put a really great imprint on these animals and they are works of art. You know, that's why I love tortoises so much. They look like they were actually sculpted from the stones that they walk upon. So I just get a kick out of this particular species. Highly herb uh, herbivorous species, grasses, different succulents. They're gonna wander around eating different flowers and weeds and fruit occasionally, seasonally as it occurs. Now, Eric Good and Paul Gibbons have both, uh, Paul Gibbons is the director of the Conservancy. They have gone to Madagascar to really see how this animal lives in the wild and to do field research with the Durrell Wildlife Trust uh, who is managing the population of wild animals out there now and I think that's just invaluable. If you can get out in the field and see how the animals live you can really create an incredible habitat for these animals to reproduce in in captivity. And all the other animals that they have in this enclosure are actually animals that were from the illicit wildlife trade. So it's an honor for them to be trusted, the Turtle Conservancy to be trusted with these animals and to be the stewards of this unfortunately declining animal. So there you have it guys, I'm really excited I was able to show this to you, the Plowshare Tortoise. It's a real treat for me to be able to be in the enclosure. I want to say thanks to the Turtle Conservancy for allowing me this unfettered access to their facility. And if you guys want to help out the Turtle Conservancy, go to turtleconservancy.org a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you can afford guys, please do it because what they've created here is beautiful and costs a lot of money to keep it going. If you love turtles, you'll love them. Take care.